Hello, I'm V.B. Price. I'm the editor of New Mexico Mercury. I'm here today with attorney Richard Barish, who's been one of those leading a charge to defend a, a very cherished view of the Albuquerque Bosque that's evolved over probably the last 40 years. A view that sees the Bosque as a semi-wild river ecosystem, a wildlife habitat in the middle of New Mexico's largest city and not as an urban park development as conceived by Mayor Richard Berry and his Rio Grande Vision team. Richard Barish is the Bosque Issues Chair for the Central New Mexico group of the Sierra Club, and we are really pleased and delighted to have you here with us today to talk about this complicated but basically simple issue. Thank you so much for having me. It's really an honor to be here with you today. As we know, uh, historically, uh, the efforts to preserve and conserve the Rio Grande Bosque uh, as a semi-wild environment has uh, involved probably many thousands of volunteer uh, workers over the years and surely thousands and thousands of hours uh, since the 1970s and has resulted in many public documents and binding policy decisions uh, wrung from long, long political struggle. Uh, so recently the mayor uh, has proposed the development of the Bosque that is, at least to my mind, completely at odds uh, with this 40-year history of struggle to keep the Bosque a wild ecosystem. Uh, I know the Sierra Club has opposed uh, uh, the mayor's plans, as has the Mercury. I'd like to hear your views uh, on, on the Rio Grande vision um, um, and uh, sort of then explore what the alternatives there might be and, um, and what exactly uh, uh, the existing plans are about and how they deal with the Bosque. Well, he, he, here's the problem with the, the mayor's plan for the Bosque. A, as you mentioned, the thing that really makes the Bosque a special and a wonderful place um, is that it's a place right in the middle of the city, probably within 20 minutes of even, even the furthest reaches of the city, where you can go down and you can enjoy nature. You can watch the, you can see the beautiful forms of the cottonwood trees, which are one of the most beautiful trees on God's green earth. Um, you can watch birds at any season of the year. There are wonderful birds to watch down there. In the summertime, you see the colorful uh, summer tanagers and the blue grosbeaks. In the wintertime, there's the cranes and the ducks and the geese. Um, you can you can uh, enjoy the murmur of the river. If you're on the west side, you can see the uh, the, the mountains in the background. It's just a great place to enjoy nature. And, and it's really probably a unique resource that we have here in this city. There's a guy named uh, Chuck Buxbaum who teaches at uh, Sandia Prep. And uh, Chuck uh, had his, he's a science teacher, and Chuck had his environmental sciences class try to find if there were other cities that had a kind of urban riparian forest in the middle of the city. And I think he found one city up in Alaska, but beyond that, this is really a unique and a wonderful resource. And, and it's something that really, the, 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 the natural qualities of it should be the center of any plan for the Bosque. The problem with the plan that the mayor has proposed is that it would, to a great extent, turn the Bosque into more of a manicured urban park. Some of the things that are proposed in the Rio Grande Vision include uh, potentially very wide, smooth trails, like 10 foot wide trails that are smooth and covered, covered with crusher vines. Um, there are uh, 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 boardwalks, there are bridges constructed within the Bosque, there are viewing platforms, there are benches, and, and in total this really, number one, it, it changes the whole uh, feeling of what the Bosque is from being a, a natural, a green natural open space into more of an urban park kind of an experience. The, the other problem with that kind of development is that not only does it change the experience for us, but it also changes the experience for the animals that use the Bosque and in particular the, uh, the birds. And, and the reason that we know that is that uh, there is an organization here in Albuquerque called Hawks Aloft. Uh, Gail Garber is the executive director of Hawks Aloft. And, and one of the things that Hawks Aloft has, does is that it does bird surveys in the Bosque. So mm -hmm. for the last 10 years, it has been doing bird surveys, and I believe about 70 different transects, wow. half mile long transects up and down the middle valley under contract with the Corps of Engineers. 
And one of those transects is located in an area in Rio Rancho, where Rio Rancho built a development very similar to what the city is proposing here in Albuquerque. Uh. And what and so they have data before it was built and after it was built. And, and what they found is that once this development was built, bird numbers plummeted. Oh my God. And so even 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 uh, taking into account you know drought and other factors. Uh, bird numbers plummeted. So we know this will have a very uh, adverse effect on bird life. And we also think it will have an adverse effect on other, other life within the bosque, including reptiles and amphibians, because it's going to create this segmentation of their habitat. So uh, th 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 that's why we're very concerned about what it is that, that the mayor is proposing. So it's been my understanding that, um, that the mayor's, um, that the mayor really didn't uh, consult with uh, many local environmental groups or environmentalists or with what remains of those uh, large cadre of volunteers who helped to create uh, the original Bosque Plan and who, who backed and supported the Bosque Action Plan, which is still, I believe, a rank two city uh, planning document. Is that, uh, is that your observation of what happened uh, 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 during the early planning phase of this? Well, I think you've exactly hit your nail on the head, hit the nail on the head as, as far as what the genesis of this problem is. Um, I, I was not involved early on because the Sierra Club was not contacted about this, nor was any other environmental group uh, who might have an interest in, in this contact about this, to my knowledge. And, and, I, and I think that what happened was uh, the mayor um, had this, this idea of ABQ the plan. There were, there were various components of ABQ the plan. They had some public meetings at which they, they uh, um, uh, got feedback on what uh, things should be included in ABQ the plan. And one of those things was the Rio Grande Division, the Bosque portion, and it was decided that, that that would be part of ABQ the plan. But once it was decided that this was going to be part of ABQ the plan, uh, as far as I am aware, there were not any public meetings that were held to solicit input from the public as to what they wanted uh, done with the Bosque. They just immediately um, shipped this out to a, an architectural firm to do, to do planning documents. And, and uh, the planning was done by the architectural firm, but the public wasn't really consulted about what uh, should be done in the Bosque. And that really, I think, is why we're in the situation that we're in now, where the mayor has a plan on the one hand that, that, that is supported by, by, by the mayor's office and, and, and the architects, and, and, and um, the, the, on the other hand, there's the public that's very passionate about preserving the Bosque, and, and, um, and they have two different, two different competing visions of what should be done with the Bosque. I know I hear a lot of, uh, a lot of discussion at all, oh, you know, the Sierra Club, you know, it's just a naysaying group and all these environmentalists, they never want any change, it's just all, all about change, but that's really not it at all. Um, what we all really want is for the Bosque to, to, to flourish and to grow as, as a wild place. And I know the Sierra Club and you personally have a different view of how to help the Bosque. And it's it's pretty proactive and aggressive, and and has and has a lot of ideas, but it's largely outside, if I'm not uh, mistaken, of the confines of the Bosque itself. So so where things stand right now is that uh, back in 2013, early in 2013. Uh, $2.9 million was appropriated for the first phase of implementation of the Rio Grande vision. Um, there are, that money has already been appropriated. Right now, the mayor can, can do what he wants with that money, uh, subject to the, the limitation that it be around Central Avenue. But, uh, but we think there are things that good things that could be done with that money that would not involve harming the Bosque. Uh, one thing is that we really want people to enjoy the Bosque. It's a great place. We want to encourage people to get down there and enjoy nature in the Bosque. And, 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 and uh, one thing that I think inhibits people from doing that is that they see the Bosque and, they, and, and a lot of people who aren't really used to nature and don't really know the Bosque think of it as kind of an ominous place. You know, they, they don't know what's down there. They imagine that there may be drug addicts and rapists and all kinds of horrible people down there in the Bosque and, 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 and there's nothing to, to tell them the, the contrary. So uh, a lot of the entrances to the Bosque are simply, you know, at the end of the bridges, 
uh, uh, most most of the entrances are from the bridges because th there's a thing called the clear ditch, which is a drainage ditch, which prevents you from coming in at every street because right. you have to cross it. So the bridges are the, are the principal entrance pr entrance ways, and a lot of the entrances are, are just simply curb cuts at the end of the bridge. You, you, you turn off there. There's no parking area. There's no sign that says "Welcome to the Rio Grande Valley State Park. This is a wonderful place to enjoy nature." Uh, here are the trails you can hike on. There's nothing to let people know that this really is a great place to go and enjoy nature. So one thing they could could do with that money, and the city has to its credit to some degree adopted the, this idea in, in the first implementation phase uh, around Central Avenue, but one thing they could do is, is at other places as well is to make it the Bosque a more welcoming place by, by having more formalized parking, by having signage that lets people know this is a place where they can come. This is the park. It's a place where they, where they can come and enjoy nature. That's one thing they could do. Another thing is that they could uh, spend more money on conservation. E even though the Bosque uh, looks like a natural place, it really it's what nature has done to a very altered and manipulated ecosystem. Right. The river is not at all what it was in its natural state. Um, and, and, and because of that, it's a, it's, it's a very stressed ecosystem. So it's not at all like what it was in its natural state. In the natural state, it was more it was more of a patchwork of different kinds of habitats. Now it's mostly just you know uh, cottonwood forest. Um, so uh, one one thing they could do is to do some to do restoration work. And I should say that I should give, give credit where credit is due. The city is doing some good restoration work, and we shouldn't uh, we shouldn't ignore that. As is the Corps of Engineers. But 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 really, it, the Bosque is a big place. It could always use more money for restoration to to restore some of those uh, wetland habitats, wet meadow habitats, and also to try to ensure that uh, the cottonwood forest is there in the future. Cottonwoods are not long lived trees. They only live about 130 years on average. Um, they need flooding in order to regenerate. So somehow you have to get water in there in order for new cottonwoods to regenerate. Uh, although you can't just also do pole plantings, you know, dig down to the water table, put in a cottonwood branch, and, and that, will, that, will, that will root out. But, but um, uh, certainly more money could be used for conservation. Uh, another thing that, that uh, has, has uh, gotten a lot of interest and support is the idea uh, to spend that money on introducing our, our young citizens to the Bosque. Mm -hmm. it, it seems that uh, from the comments that, that, that were, 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 were made at the September 4th public meeting on the first implementation phase of the Rio Grande Division, that's, that young people really don't know very much about the Bosque. And one thought is to spend money to sponsor field trips to the Bosque so that every student will have you know, a field trip to the Bosque and will, will begin to uh, know this is a place they can visit and, and begin to understand a bit about the, the, the environment in the Bosque. And uh, one thing that the um, Bosque has that's really a wonderful feature is the Paseo del Bosque Trail. This is the hard surface trail on the levees, so outside the forest on the levees, and it's just a great place to ride your bike and to walk. But because it is such a great place, it's become very popular, and in some places it is very crowded, especially um, in the area around Central where the first implementation phase is. Um, and, and there are conflicts between the slower moving traffic, people who are walking, or perhaps you know, you know, parents with kids on their bikes, and the faster moving traffic. Uh, one, another thought is that we could spend that money on improving the trail and perhaps separating out the slower moving traffic from the faster moving traffic to make that a safer experience for everyone, that, everyone involved. Uh, finally, um, one other thing that, that, that is being proposed and has been floated is, is it just concerns our general maintenance of our parks and our open space facilities. There is a great backlog of, of, of maintenance that needs to be done that has not been funded. So for instance, uh, the biopark, I believe, uh, says they have an $18 million shortfall in, 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 in their maintenance uh, funding. There was an audit recently of the Parks and Open Space Division that found that they had no maintenance plan whatsoever, and that in looking at the parks, 59% of the parks had obvious maintenance uh, needs. Mm -hmm. So another, another uh, thought is that really we shouldn't be incurring new obligations that will incur yet more maintenance uh, expense, but we should make sure that the things that we already have are, are adequately maintained. Those all sound like wonderfully reasonable ideas. Could you explain to our audience what's already happening at Central now, what this implementation plan is about, and 
what's actually happening there and how it might uh, foreshadow uh, what might happen in the rest of the Bosque. So your viewers should understand that really there are two plans. One is the Rio Grande vision itself. And, and this is what the city calls a conceptual planning document. They say it is not a blueprint uh, for what will be done in the Bosque. It's, it's just this, 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 uh, this, this kind of a collection of ideas of things that could be done. Personally, I think that is a bit disingenuous because when you look at the first implementation phase, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, it pretty much tracks what is in the Rio Grande vision. So, uh, and that's what I've already talked about about with, with the plans for, for the for the for the you know the, the viewing platforms and the benches and the, and and the, and, the, and, the, and the boardwalks and so forth. Um, the um, first implementation phase is between Central Avenue and the I forty bridge. And, 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 and there are some things in there that, 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 that are, are not a bad idea, for instance, improving the parking to, to encourage people to come and visit the Bosque. But the real problem with that uh, particular implementation plan is that they are planning a, a trail that will go throughout this entire stretch and that will potentially be a 10 foot wide crusher fine trail wow. that will have those effects of really changing the experience and, and uh, having an adverse effect on birds. Plus there are associated with that, there are four bridges, there are four viewing platforms, and there's a bunch of uh, boardwalk, uh, 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 several areas of boardwalk um, on that plan. So again, it will, it will convert that, uh, the park really into more of an urban park type of a place as well as having an adverse effect on, on wildlife. And, and this is the, uh, the, uh, the plan for which the $2.9 million has been appropriated. I know one of the things that disturbs me uh, uh, the most, having been watching uh, Bosque uh, restoration since 1969 at least, and writing about it for a lot of years, um, is, is that there's, um, there are already existing planning documents from the federal government, from the city, from the county, I believe, too, from, uh, that, that place a very stringent requirements on what must happen before you do any development, what kind of, what kind of environmental impacts and, and uh, ecological impacts there will be. It just seems that these documents have been simply ignored uh, in, this, in this new vision. Um, and I'm wondering if you could explain to us uh, what those documents are and what they stipulate, or at least the important points, because they stipulate quite a bit. So the, the governing planning document is, I think, I think you mentioned it earlier, it's, it's called the Bosque Action Plan, and it is a rank two city plan. That means it's a facility plan, and, and it is uh, a, a plan that was adopted by city council, and, it, it, and in theory, everything that is done in the Bosque should be uh, consistent with the Bosque Action Plan. Uh, the Bosque Action Plan is a great document. A, a lot of very good thought and very good work went into that document. And, and, and although it, it, it uh, provides for and allows recreation within the Bosque, it is all within the overarching context that everything that is done in the Bosque should be governed by what is appropriate for the environment in the Bosque, for the ecology of the Bosque. Um, and it's very clear that the, the spirit of that document is that the environment comes first, and, and, and uh, enjoyment and recreation in the Bosque has to be done uh, subject to uh, not harming uh, the environment of the Bosque. So, so one of the key uh, provisions in the Bosque Action Plan says that the ecological impacts of any proposed uh, 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 project in the Bosque has to be evaluated prior to any surface disturbing activity. Um, Originally, I would say that uh, you know before there was public involvement in 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 the in the uh, Rio Grande vision, the Bosque Action Plan really was being ignored. Uh, uh, the, the the critics of, the, of that plan brought to the attention of the city that that, that fact, including the fact that they needed to um, evaluate the uh, the ecological impacts of any any activities, any, anything they planned for the Bosque. Um, the city, to its credit, has uh, taken that to heart. We hope that this is not just um, something that they are doing just to paper over uh, uh, what they plan on doing, and they will take to heart what the results of that are, and that their contractor, uh, who they've, they've hired, will in fact do a good job in evaluating the, eco the, the potential ecological impacts. But uh, th that remains to be seen. But at this point, uh, they, are, they are collecting data. Um, that will be completed uh, in about September of 2014, in the fall of 2014. 
So if the um, if if the plan around uh, uh, central um, is actually about to be implemented and uh, shovels are about to go into the dirt, and and what's happened there hasn't hasn't been evaluated ecologically, it then goes against the Bosque Action Plan, and the Bosque Action Plan's basic analysis is already proven to be accurate in the sense that what happened in Rio Rancho is an example of, of what can take place to wildlife and to birds in particular when, uh, when the impact of development hasn't been scrutinized and handled properly. Is that an accurate view of what might be up? So, so the city's uh, original plan for the Bosque was that it was going to have the 95% uh, plans done by this month, January of 2014. Uh, that, was, that was the original plan. So essentially the plans would be completed. Uh, th th that was criticized because it was felt that you really can't decide what it is you want to do until you know what the effects of yes. your plans might be. So, for instance, if you're going to be putting in wide, wide, 10 foot wide trails, uh, you want to know what the effect of those 10 foot wide trails are going to be before you decide that's what we should be doing. Mm -hmm. So they were criticized for that. The city, uh, to its credit, again, agreed that it would put off finalizing the plans until the environmental work uh, was completed. Now, I have rec they have recently posted on their website a schedule for uh, how they are proceeding. And they indicate that they are, there are some uh, plans that are still ongoing uh, in this time frame and, and through April that are going to be then, then, then have the subject of a public meeting in, in, in April and May. I don't really understand what those are, but I do believe that they should not be putting things out for public comment until they determine that those, that those things are in fact uh, something that, that, that should be done in the Bosque. So for instance, they shouldn't be asking the, 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 the public to comment on whether they want a 10 foot wide trail until they determine that a 10 foot wide trail would not cause any environmental, adverse environmental effects. I think in my mind, one of the, um, the examples that come to mind about this conflict uh, are wrapped up in, in the vision and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's it's very aggressive uh, uh, view of of, uh, of human interaction with the with the Bosque and what is now existent at the Albuquerque Nature Center, which is um, Ant Antoine Predock's uh, sort of premier environmental act of genius, I think, where you have a building that is almost totally invisible that has as little impact as humanly possible on the environment that actually acts as a blind in its own right. And, and as a uh, and as a viewing platform for all kinds of of, uh, of aquatic wildlife, um, and so to have to have that as an example, and to have that as as what we've all lived with for many many decades now. Well, I, I guess maybe three decades almost, um, and then to suddenly see park benches and viewing towers and bridges and wide trails and. The, benches and all kinds of things is just a, a real grinding shock. Uh, and, and I'm just, I'm surprised that, that uh, the people who designed the Albuquerque Vision, uh, this is just my view, but apparently didn't bother to go down to the Nature Center and, and see what actually worked and why it worked and who supported it and who spent hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of human hours supporting that and arguing for it and, you know, working to protect it. I, I'm on my, my soapbox here, but, but there is a very clear distinction between that building and all that it's achieved for all of us and all the ex experiences we've had because of it and what may indeed happen to the Bosque. I mean, it could be literally destroyed as a wildlife habitat if, if the mayor's plans go through. Do you think, is, is it possible that, that it could be destroyed as we know it? I think that's a very real possibility. I, I think if, if you really turn this into an urban park uh, where, where the you know, principal activities are walking your dog and drinking, a, drink, drinking your coffee and the, the viewing platforms, um, it, it would not be a place where, where, where wildlife would exist and where the birds would, would, would come in great numbers and it would not be a, a, this kind of nature preserve that it is right now. 
Um, the Nature Center is, is a wonderful, wonderful place. I, I love the Nature Center. And, and really a part of what makes that special is that they did create those those wetland habitats there. And those wetland habitats you know, do attract wonderful, wonderful birds. You know, I got here a bit early before my, my, uh, my before we were scheduled to do this interview, and I ran down to the Nature Center, and there was a hooded merganser out there in one of those oh, ponds. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> a, a gorgeous bird. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and it's a wonderful place. Um, so I, 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 but, but I, but I think the nature center, that kind of development should be limited. Um, we don't want too many buildings. We, we don't want too many, uh, of those wide, uh, oh, graded no, no. trails. Um, and, and, and most of the bosque really should be left in its, in its natural state, um, and not developed. But the nature center truly is a, is, is an architectural wonder. It's a great, great building. I know there have been, uh, many, many uh, uh, school children in the Bosque now for a dozen years or so, examining wildlife and measuring groundwater and you know, looking at the, at the growth of trees and, and what animals are there. I also know that, that there's been a lot of pole planting uh, in the Bosque, but it's incredibly hard to actually uh, sustain the world's, I guess, the second largest uh, cottonwood forest by pole planting, you have to rely on natural processes. And in uh, in a cottonwood bosque, the most natural, well, I guess, the natural processes processes to allow those seeds to uh, to move through through flooded water and eventually uh, settle down and then have another little flood and then eventually. So, what would an urban park do to uh, the flooding of the bosque that needs to happen on a very regular basis. Well, well as you mentioned, uh, cottonwoods uh, r require flooding to germinate. They will not germinate if they are not flooded, and I believe they have to be flooded for two consecutive years to really get established. Um, they, they, they have evolved so that their seeds, the cotton, will fly at the time that, that, that uh, the river is flooded. However, because uh, so much of the water is, is, is used and because we have upstream dams to prevent flooding and because the area is so develop, developed, there really has not been overbanked flooding to any extent in the Middle Valley and certainly in the Albuquerque Reach and in the Rio Grande Valley State Park for, for, for many years. Um, so, and and it's, it, it's a problem to do that both because of the fact that if you have flows that are are substantial enough to flood here, you you cause some problems down downstream for some structures downstream, in particular a railroad bridge uh, downstream, and, and also it, it's just hard to to get that water because all the water is is called for, and of course the predictions are with global warming, we're going to have a third less water in this reach than we we've had previously so so it's it, it's hard to get that water so uh cottonwoods are, are short-lived trees again about 130 years on average and right now we have a middle-aged cottonwood forest uh, most of the cottonwoods in the bosque uh, germinated in some floods in the 1940s so we've got you know a 70 75 year old flock, uh, cottonwood forest right now um, so uh, replacing those cottonwood trees it is a real issue. There, there is a, some, some pole planting that goes on every year. It's, it's very significant, but of course the, the Bosque is a big place. Uh, one thing that um, they have tried to do in recent years in, 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 in conjunction with, especially the Corps of Engineers, in conjunction with the restoration efforts is that they have built high flow channels. And these are kind of depressions that, that, that uh, curve off the river through the bosque and then go back into the river. And when the river is high enough, those channels flood. And if you look at those channels, there is, in fact, a very good bosque uh, cottonwood recruitment uh, in those channels. Yes. Um, so uh, we're, 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 we're trying to be you know, very clever about what we do to, to, to get cotton, new cottonwoods growing. But still, it, it is definitely a, a concern and an uphill an uphill battle. Now, if we build things in the Bosque, if we build, you know, develop, you know, kind of a kind of engineered trails and bridges and and platforms and and benches and picnic areas, all of those things potentially could be damaged uh, by flooding. So that would be another yet one more uh, hurdle to overcome when we want to flood the Bosque if that if that becomes feasible in order to have cottonwood uh, cottonwood germination. So so so, so that is definitely uh, an issue that we're concerned about. The journal ran a poll a while back um, that that um, sort of put a very curious spin. The questions I thought were were um, 
reined in a particular direction to get particular answers. But one of the things that came up was that uh, was that there was apparently in in the views of those who answered it um, not enough access to the mosque. And of course, there's no blockage at all to getting into the mosque, although uh, it's um, as you point out, it's oftentimes hard to know how to actually do it. But one of one of your um, one of the uh, I think the passionate concerns of most of the people who are opposed to this uh, under the mayor's plan is that is that they don't want to stop people from going to the Bosque. They just want the Bosque to be the Bosque when you get there eventually. And uh, listening to what you've been saying about about access and about signage and other things. Uh, oh, that seems very clear to me. So what is the, uh, is there some kind of monkey business being being, being um, pulled off here with these weird poles and, and, uh, and uh, the mayor's relationship with the journal possibly and other things? And how does that play out in terms of the general public in your, in your view? Well, I, I can't speak to the mayor's particular relationship with the journal, although the, the journal does seem to be a supporter of the mayor. But with respect to that poll question, as you indicated, the poll question was misleading in the sense that it, 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 it spoke of uh, access to the Bosque and it implied that there wasn't, the implication was that there isn't access now. And in fact, in terms of the, 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 the first implementation phase, that the trail that they plan on constructing is over a, a smaller, older trail. I mean, the, <laughs> the, the trail already exists, and they, they just want to now put in the, the Rolls-Royce trail, um, the 10-foot-wide the crusher fine trail. Um, so so uh, it was misleading in that respect. And also, it's kind of in the nature of, of, of these kinds of poll questions that, they, that they, they give you a very limited set of facts. Yes. They just ask you a question, and, and it's a question, in this case, that most people probably don't know very much about. And so they didn't t also tell people that, you know, would, would you still support uh, uh, this development if, in fact, you knew that this would have a very adverse effect on the number of birds that were down in the Bosque, yes. for instance. So, so, so really, there's, there's only a, a limited um, conclusion that you can draw from that, from that kind of a poll, and I think really the, the answer is you really can't conclude anything from that kind of a poll. It's really kind of meaningless, and it, 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 it seems more political than it does designed to really uh, uh, ferret out public opinion. So um, at, um, at the big public meeting in September, I believe, uh, there were 300, 400 people there, uh, the vast majority of them in opposition to this uh, development effort in the Boston. Um, it was really clear that there, there really are many, many Albuquerqueans and many New Mexicans uh, who are deeply concerned about the Bosque, who love the Bosque, who treat it as, a, as part of their birthright and part of their homeland, uh, and, that, uh, and that view you know, turning it into an urban, urban park is a kind of desecration of, of almost a sacred place in their family life, in their history. Um, so I, I think um, uh, you know much more about this population of passionate people than I do of certain because you've been involved with them. What characterizes th this group? And where do they come from? And what kind of people are they? And, and uh, why is it so important to them? Well, I, I think it's it's really all kind of people that that, that are involved. We have uh, uh, you know lots of uh, traditional progressive types, and we've got uh, people from the South Valley, and we've got uh, horse people and, and bike people, and and really it's, it's quite a, a broad cross section of people. But but I have to say that that it you know I, I thought it was just me and a few other people, and it, it really has amazed me at the at the extent and the depth of passion there is for the Bosque. At, at that uh, meeting that you mentioned on September. 4th at public meeting I, I was I was hoping we'd get you know 50 people 60 people and 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 the people started coming and they just kept coming and coming and coming and we had a, we, we, we had a Sierra Club sign-in sheet and so we know for sure there were 325 people wow. and we think there were you know a bunch that didn't sign in so we think 350 to 400 people easily at that meeting as you say virtually every person that spoke was opposed to the, the, the mayor's plan 
And, and really, I think it, it, it's just a testament to what a wonderful place the Bosque is, that it inspires so much passion and inspires so many people to come out and spend their time to, 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 to defend the Bosque. You know, I, I think that you know, the nature that we, that we experience and that we enjoy, we, we, we become attached to, and the Bosque has, has just wonderful things about it that, 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 really, that really inspire that passion. And uh, people, people just, uh, just uh, to their credit, respond and, and come out to defend it. So we know also that uh, basically the comments and the and the uh, and the showing at that meeting had largely been ignored by uh, by the uh, the Rio Grande Division team so far. Anyway, uh, what can what can our viewers do if they are as as uh, involved in the Busky as as I imagine they are? What can they actually do to help at this point? Well, the first thing that I would say is that people should uh, get on our listserv so they will be informed of upcoming uh, events, uh, upcoming uh, places where, where, where public input is needed, and so they will be kept abreast of things as they develop. And they can do that by sending me an email, and my email is richard.barish at gmail.com, and Barish is spelled B as in baseball, A-R-I-S-H. So richard.barish at gmail.com. Send me an email and I'll put you on our list. And also indicate if you, if you, want, to become, if you want to become more involved. Um, but as far as uh, what is going to be happening in the immediate future, uh, there may be some actions uh, before city council. And so we may want people to come down to city council and, and testify. Um, there are going to be a series of what the city is calling educational forums, educational meetings between uh, February and April of, of this year. And uh, people can come out and hear what the city has to say and, and ask questions of the city and, and let, let, the, let, let, let uh, the city know what they, what they think. And then in May, there's going to be a meeting on these uh, design plans that they are, are, are working on. And again, also attend those meetings and uh, uh, comment on those. Well, this has been a really strongly informative discussion, I think. I've learned a tremendous amount, and I'm very grateful to have you here with us. Thank you so much for, for spending your time and, and for explaining this so, so crisply and eloquently. It's been a great time for me. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. You're very welcome.